on material level, let us say. Then on physical level, have you ever massaged their head? I have massaged so many people's head. At least fifty percent of you had that. What physical comfort you have given to that person? If you are the guru, then what is the emotional confidence you have given to that person? If you are shouting for that per person, why did you keep it there? Why didn't you keep it here? Also it is vice versa among human beings. If you try to be nice to somebody, that person becomes ego-oriented. Dangerous stuff, you know. You are nice to somebody, you are kind to that person, you give him some money or you give him something, then they say, ego comes in that person. I'm surprised sometimes, how can it be? But it happens. I mean, I have been victim of such a nonsense that people had to say, Mother, you have spoiled that person. Just don't know, how can I spoil? Why it happens? Because human beings have another great quality, that they cannot understand that anybody can care for them, because they cannot care for anyone. Anybody cares for them, they become egoistical. I have known about some Indians who went abroad and people thought Indians have come as if Adi Gurus have come. They can be worse than you people and are, no doubt. And then you start worshipping them as Indians. And then you understand that this is just a donkey from India you have brought, which is kicking you all the time. The image of that Indian goodness is not there. Because of this problem, the guru finds it impossible how to deal with the disciples. But there is a solution. Leave it to your mother and I'll put them right. All such problems you can leave it to me. When people try to take advantage of you or trick to ego, Tell them, now I'm going to leave it to Mother, not, I'm not going to look after you anymore. That will settle them right. They do not know that this cosmic consciousness is also very mischievous. It has lots of mischiefs up its sleeves. And it can work out such mischiefs that people are amazed and aghast. So all such problems, if you cannot deal, you can leave it to Me. And another one is to their Kundalini, to tell them that they are catching on this or catching on that. It's your duty to tell them that you are catching on your ego. Better be corrected. Now all of you can become gurus, every one of you can become gurus and can develop that great capacity to be one with that cosmic consciousness, completely out of the clutches of the gravity of the earth, materialism. Without achieving that, you have no right to tell anybody what is to be done.
first it should be your practice and precept in your own life in your own example and then your example is sufficient to convince others today through this understanding that you have to rise about the gravitational force of materialism which is today's religion everywhere whatever they may call it whether it is communism or uh, capitalism or democracy or democracy whether it is christianity hinduism islam or any other nonsense all of that is nothing but materialism in its all absurd forms kundalini is the only thing that can take you like the stalk of the lotus out of this mud of materialism and that is what one has to achieve especially in the west it goes in the subtle and subtler and subtlest forms so be on the lookout and ultimately it expresses itself as ego all materialists are egoistical racist they are robbers and plunderers they go to other countries like south africa and settle down nicely robbers and plunderers and extracting the wealth of another all this can become very sophisticated and beautified we have to fight that but to fight that we have to get out of it completely otherwise we cannot fight it when we are in it so all of us should try to get out of it fully it does not mean that you should all take out your clothes and say that we have given up everything that's another style it has started now it means that you respect all that is beautiful you respect all that is good but you are not dominated by it you are not in the clutches of anything if i want i can wear a gold chain otherwise nothing then bother i don't care that should be the attitude if i have or if i have to i will nothing can dominate me nothing can give me status i stand on my own status and on my position and on my authority because i am that pure consciousness nothing can spoil me nothing can bring me down nothing can bow me i cannot make any man dominated by me either a beautiful saying of adi shankara acharya tat nishkal about brahma tattva i am that brahma on that if you have 
Let me see. That's the best way to understand what you are. Just bring it. Very famous. Have you got it? No, not that. Another. Just bring it. Have you got the book? Bring the book. My chashma is in there. Where's it? This is the one. Oh. This one should come. This one is the one. You just read it in English language. I don't need to just. When you have got your nirvana. What happens to you? It says, Home. I'm neither the mind, intelligence, ego, nor chitta, neither the ears nor the tongue nor the senses of smell and sight, neither ether nor hair, nor fire, nor water, nor hurt. I am eternal bliss and awareness. I'm Shiva, I'm Shiva. I'm neither the prana, nor the five vital brains, neither the seven elements of the body, nor its five seeds nor hands, nor feet, nor tongue, nor other organs of action. I'm eternal bliss and awareness. I'm Shiva, I'm Shiva. Neither greed, greed nor delusion, loving nor liking have I. Nothing of pride or ego, of dharma or liberation, neither desire of the mind, nor object for its desiring. I'm eternal bliss and awareness. I'm Shiva. I'm Shiva. Nothing of pleasure and pain, of virtue and vice do I know, or mantra of sacred place, of Vedas of sacrifice. Neither I am the heater, the food nor the act of eating. I'm eternal bliss and awareness. I'm Shiva, I'm Shiva. Death of or fear I have known, nor any distinction of caste, neither father nor mother, nor even a bird have I, neither friend nor comrade, neither disciple nor guru. I'm eternal bliss and awareness. I'm Shiva, I'm Shiva. I have no form or fancy. The all-pervading I am. Everywhere I exist. And yet, I'm beyond the senses. Neither salvation have, nor anything to be known. I'm eternal bliss and awareness. I'm Shiva, I'm Shiva. That's what you are. 
you are eternal bliss and awareness, the consciousness, the pure consciousness. I think this must be, everybody must remember by heart and must say in all the ashrams, that's a very good way of remembering what you are. May God bless you. Yesterday I could not take the name of all the leaders uh, who were very good, who have come very recently and are doing great work, uh, like persons like Javier, I would say, is being appointed only a few months back in Milano and he's doing such a good work. Uh, and there are other people, say, in Venice, uh, and uh, also we see that recently some leaders have been appointed in Milus and Maplier. They are doing very good work. I get very good reports about that place. Amazed how the new centers are coming up so well. Even in Australia, there are many new centers that have come up which are doing such good work. Uh, in England, there are so many new centers that have started and we are doing good work. Some of the old people are dropping out, but the new people are coming up are very good. We find it all over, all over. This kind of thing happening now, a new dynamic leadership is coming from people and I'm amazed how they have joined very recently as leaders of smaller places and are doing so good in every country. Even to take the, all the names may not be possible, but I feel that so many of them have been really doing such a good job that uh, only 
divine can explain it. It's the divine's great blessings that we have got all the right people. Sahaja Yoga is definitely progressing. It should not progress faster than the divine wants it to progress. And so we should accept that speed, but still we should try our level best because it is our job to try and work out as much as possible and as far as we can. May God bless you all, all those who are working in smaller places as leaders. For everyone I get report and I understand them and I have tremendous feeling for all of them. But some of the places where there are smaller uh, ashrams and things, problems are cropping up and I'm surprised how still these problems are there. So everybody must try to correct oneself, should become a, an example of compassion, love and understanding. And I hope I will have no reports at least about the leaders or their wives especially, the wives. Wives is a big problem, I wish I had told something about the wives. Maybe this evening I might be able to speak about the wives of the leaders. I've been speaking about them all the time. So the wives have a greater responsibility because they are the source of compassion and not of disciplining. They are the source of joy and not of uh, controlling. They are the source of motherliness and not guruness. So they have to be very different personalities. Instead of that, they think we are Guru's wives, so we can do what we like, we can dominate people and shout at people and can uh, arrange uh, everything ourselves. No, they have to be completely on the background. And for that I can mention so many of them are very good wives who have shown great, great uh, understanding of their role as Sahaja Yoginis. So I would request you not to become gurus yourself, but to become gurvis. And gurvis are the ones who look after the other side of the guru, which may be neglected because of his disciplining nature, which he has to have. And they are the ones who are the cementing factor. If the guru is the brick, they are the cements. But it acts sometimes the other way now. So I didn't say much about them, but I hope this evening I might say something about them. May God bless you.